Hello, for string class today what we're going to do is look at um, a round that we're going to be doing for the next two weeks in our live orchestra sessions. So um, this round is by a composer called Thomas Tallis who is I think one of my favourite composers. Um, he wrote a very very long time ago so um, if you're in Jenny's um, oral class you'll be learning about Baroque and classical and romantic, so the different types of music hit that we have from, from the past that we play. Now Thomas Tallis comes from even further before then, he's a Renaissance composer. And don't worry if you don't know any of those words, but basically hopefully you've heard of Henry VIII. So he was a composer for Henry VIII and he wrote for um, the church services and for the sort of festivals and things that happened in the court. Um, he also then was a composer for his son Edward, then he was a composer for his daughter Mary, and then he was the composer for um, the Queen Elizabeth I. And the thing is, there was a lot of change at that time, and so his different bits of music had to change for each different um, king or queen that he served. So there you go, there's a bit of history about Thomas Tallis. If you want to find out more about him, then go and you know put put him his his name into youtube and you can hear lots of the different stuff that he's he's written so the reason we've chosen i've chosen this canon um is because it's it's quite a quick way of getting really beautiful harmony um and and playing together and making a really sort of lovely joyful sound now we can play together again which is great so we're going to use the key of c major because it's useful for both the cellos and the violins. Now, normally we go for D and um, D and G, but today we're going to go for C. So cellos and violas, it's going to be a bit easier for you. Violins, you're going to have to remember your low second fingers. Um, so no F sharps, no C sharps. So um, I'm. We're going to start off by doing a C major scale. I'm going to write it, but I want you to think of it in terms of sulphur. So we have Do is C, Re is D, Mi is E, Fa is close, so it's an F natural, So is G, La is A, T is B, and back to Do, which is C. So at the top, you've got the note names here. Now, we're going to have a go at doing it two octaves which for cellos and violas is quite easy, for violins it's tricky um, but I'm going to come closer to the camera so you can see where I've put my fingers and I've given you a finger chart um, so that should help. Okay, so we're going to do two beats on each note. If you want to do vibrato you can if, you're, if you've done vibrato um, and uh, yeah, we're just going to make as rich a sound as we can. So two beats on each note starting on a C. Okay, so one two. Mm. for B and then wriggle your little finger a tiny bit higher to hit the C then wriggle your little finger back back to third finger G low one for F E third finger low two C a bit more help with the fingering there because um, C major one octave is a grade two scale um, but the two octaves going up onto the E string and going a little bit higher they're notes that you should know 
um, but um, just wiggling that little finger higher. Cellos and violas, it's one of your grade one scales, the two octaves, so I think you should be fine. Okay, so the reason we've done it two octaves is because um, some of these notes go above do and some of these notes go below do. So if we start with our middle do of the two octave scale, we can go above and below. So our middle octave do for the violins would be a low two on the A string. And a middle octave do for the cellos would be, if you'll start, it would be a fourth finger on the G string. And for violas, it would be a third finger on the G string. Okay, so it's the do that we hit middle of the scale. All right. So, mm, we are going to learn it first singing, okay, the little sections. Okay, so the first bit goes, do, do, ti, do, if we're starting on a middle C, let me just tune my book. There we go. So we'll start on middle C as our do. Okay, so if I sing it first, I'm going to do the hand signs and I'm going to sing each of the phrases. We're going to work on the first four phrases first and then we'll work on the second four phrases after that. So if I sing it first, then you sing it back to me. Do, do, ti, do. There we go. Next one. Do, re, re, mi. Join in. Do. Turn. Do, fa, fa, mi. Join in. Do, fa, fa, mi. My turn. Mi, re, re, do. Your turn. Mi, re, re, do. Okay. So now we're going to have a go at our point as we go along. Um, try singing it through with me. And this is our starting note. Do, do, ti, do, do, re, re, mi, do, fa, fa, mi, mi, re, re, do. Okay, now before we put notes to that, what I want to do is practice the rhythm. Now this piece has four beats in a bar. One, two, three, four. But we start on the up beat okay so we start on the fourth beat of the bar so we go one two three do do di, do so we start on the fourth beat of the bar before it starts and then we land this note here this second note that we sing is actually the first beat of the bar and that's where we give the accent so to, to show that with our bowing um is actually quite simple if we show how we're going to do the bowing. So the rhythm is all crotchet beats, all tars, and we count in one, two, three, and then on an up bow, do the we're just going to do this on an open D, do the up up stroke, and then land. Okay, we'll just do that again. So count in three and then do an up bow. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Yeah? So I want you to feel the sway of each group of four notes. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three. So we give a little lean to the second of the group of four, and we um and we always start these groups of four notes on an up bow. That will take a bit of brain energy to do that and that's also one of the exercises that we're focusing on um, the number of times in lessons with pupils I'm like up bow up beats starts on an up bow now every single one of these phrases starts on an upbeat so you're going to get a lot of practice all right so we practice the bowing rhythm we practice the scale let's now put the um, actual notes from the scale into the solfa okay so do do mm -hmm. do do ti do so we know that do is c c c something c now 
This got a little dash underneath it, which means it's the T, not this T up here. It's the T that comes just below Do. So Do, Do, T, Do. So C, C, what comes before C? Well, we know T is a B, but it's the B that goes just below C. So let's find our C, so the middle Do of our scale or um, fourth finger on the G string or third finger on the G, um, G string for cellos and violas. So we're going to do our bowing up, down, T. Okay, so we have a semitone. Do, do, T, do, C, C, B, C. Let's have a go. One, two, three. Okay, that's our first one. So moving from there, do, re, re, mi, that's a little bit easier. Do is C, re is D, so we have two Ds, do, re, re, mi, mi is E. Okay, so we start on our middle do, violins, you can go over onto the E string or use a fourth finger, it would be nice fourth finger practice. So it's going to be C, D, D, E. Remember to start on your up bow. One, two, three. Okay, let's try that more, once more. One, two, three. Okay, now let's see if we can join these two together. So C, C, B, C. D, 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 E, but keep remembering the phrasing, start on an up bow. One, two, three. Okay, let's carry on. Do, ba, ba, mi, C, F, F, E. While we're here, mi, mi, re, re, do, e, d, d, c. Okay, so let's learn our new section. C, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. Um, we can remember the F for violins is a low one on the E string. So, okay, let's learn this one. C, F, F, E, low two on the A string. Not good tuning for my part. Perhaps if you tune your violin first. Okay, C, F, And then you do E, D, D, C. Okay. Violins, if you want to go down an octave for these, you can. C, F, F, E, E, D, D, C. Okay. Um, so it's up to you which octave you want to play in. Um, or if you want to have a go at doing it in third position, you're very welcome to. Okay, so we've done the first half of the piece. Let's have a go at playing it through all the way through. Okay, choose which octave you want to play and remember to start each section on an up bow. Once you've started an up bow, it should all fall into place, but just make sure you always emphasize the second of each group. Okay, so all the way through, one, two, three. So it's a canon, so I'm going to start first and then what I'd like you to have a go is after I've played the first one, you join in, okay? So I'm going to go C, C, B, C and then I'm going to carry on and you join in with, your, with number one and see if you can stay one behind me, 
Okay, we're going to take it a tiny bit slower. My turn first. One, two, three. Get ready. Join in now. Um, so we'll practice that a bit more in orchestra once we put it together. Um, another thing you can do is if you're slightly struggling to play it through all through, what you can do is just pick one. I'm going to play it through as a little group again. Um, and I'd like you to just pick one and play one four times. And what you'll notice is one of them will be the same as mine and the others will create a really nice harmony with what I'm doing. Okay. So join in with me, pick one and do it four times. One, two, three. And remember to shape the phrases that you're playing. Okay. So now we've done a little bit of playing, let's do a bit more decoding. So, so fa re mi, so is a G, fa is an F, re is a D, mi is an E. Okay, so if we're playing this up high for violins, so is a low two, the G is a low two on the E string. F is a low one, D is a third finger, and E is a fourth finger, or an open string. Or you can do it down the octave, um, so if it, um, G would be third finger on the D string, F, low two, open D, and then E is the first finger. And for cellos that would be four fingers on the D string, F would be two, open one. Okay, so you can pause the video at any point to see, to sort of work out your fingers so that you feel you know where you're going. All right, and then um, I've underlined this bit six, four, four, six, and eight because they're the same. Mi, re, re, do. It's like an answering phrase that finishes off. Okay, so, and two is almost exact thing. Do, re, re, mi, da, 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 mi, re, re, do. So we finish off. So we've had this one before. E, D, D, C. Mm. Mm, I've lost my note. Mi, re, re, do. And I can put this in. Okay, so the last one we've got to work out is number seven. Um, and you'll notice it's got little dots on the bottom, little commas on the bottom. That tells us that that's a low so, a low la, and a low t. So it's still the same letter names. It's a G, A, B, C, but they're low G, low A, low B. So... <coughs> I think I need to get this board sorted out. Oh. Okay. Put this down so it doesn't get broken. There we go. Right. right. It's going to stay in place. Right. So, um, so number seven goes or up the octave. So let's have a go at just playing five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to play each one twice so you can listen. I'll play number five, then you play number five. I'll play number six, then you play it. Okay, so number five, me first. One, two, three. Um, oh, G, F. 
E. You have a go. One, two, three. G, F, D, E. And then we'll do number six. E, D, D, C. You join in with me. One, two, three. Now we're going to our low G. Have a listen. One, two, three. Join in with me. One, two, three. My turn. One, two, three. You have a go. One, two, three. Okay. So now let's have a going from five down to eight um, all together. So G, F, D, E. Are you ready? One, two, three. E, D, D, C, G, A, B, C, E, D, D, C. Okay. Um, I'm going to drop down an octave now, so I'm going to play these um, in my lower octave, you can choose which octave you want to play them in, okay? I'm going to play the whole thing through from number one to number eight. Now, if you think you're already feeling pretty confident with it, you can try in canon with me from the very start, or this time through, just have a go playing with me. And then next time through, you can have a go at canon. Okay, so one, two, three. <laughs> So now let's have a go um, in canon. If you don't feel you're ready for that, you can pick one or two of these, any number one, number two, number three, number four, between one and eight, and if you just play that on a loop lots of times, it will create different harmonies with the things that I'm playing. So even if you feel like you can own, at the speed we're going, you can only manage number one, that's fine. Play number one eight times, okay? You might play number one, then number two, then number one, then number two, and then you can replay this bit of the video as many times as you want and build up to playing the whole canon um, later in the week and, um, and have a go in orchestra as well. Okay, so let's have a go from the beginning. I'm going to start, if you want to do it in can with me, leave it, wait until I've done the first one and then join in with the second one. Okay, you ready? Well, join in with your first one once I'm playing the second one. One, two, three. <laughs> we did this in G major um, and um, on Friday group I'm not quite sure yet what we're going to do on the Saturday group um, but the point of doing this is once you know the tune the reason I've taught it to you using sulfur and not just giving you sheet music to, to read from is that if you know the sulfur you can go through the steps that we've just been through so you work out you put in the notes of the scale into your sulfur um, notation so if it was G major it would be G A B C D E F sharp G you know the sulfur for the round so then you can fill in the blank sections for the notes 
that you're supposed to be playing and then you can play it through from there because we don't re really need real notation because it's the same rhythm all the way through. Um, so if you can work out the pitches and once you know how the whole tune sounds you can transpose, that means changing the key, into any scale that you're playing. So um, some of my pupils have learnt this from notation in E flat major. <laughs> But if you know a scale, any major scale, so some of you might not have learned that key yet, and that's fine, but you will be doing G major, F major, C major, D major, A major, and this pattern just uses the sulfur notes. So this is showing you the method. Once you know something in sulfur, you can play it in any scale that you're doing. So it's sort of ear training. Um, to challenge yourself when you're playing a scale can you play pieces that you know really well in that key twinkle twinkle frere jacca this isn't quite as well known but hopefully after you've done lots of practice on it it will become a bit of an earworm and you can um and you can play it in lots of different keys and that's what we'll try doing in orchestra um we'll stick to probably g major c major we might try f major if we're feeling really brave Okay, um, but I'll take you through it, so don't worry, and just enjoy challenging your brain with your ear, um, and have a go at this as your little challenge this week. Okay, see you soon. Bye.